Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Micro Moment Monday. Today, we're going to have a discussion on the good, the bad, and the ugly about the USDA home canning guidelines. And for the first time ever, I'm going to disclose a few of the details about how I practice home canning relative to things that have happened with the USDA. In 1917, after months and months and probably years of testing, the USDA announced that pressure canning was required for low acid foods in order to kill botulism spores. That was monumental. Before that time, a lot of people had contracted botulism and had been killed by botulism. And the USDA was taking food safety for the entire public in the United States very, very seriously. And so this testing and in their laboratories, they worked feverishly to determine the best way to um, understand that. And it was pretty incredible in 1917, uh, the science that they did to back that up. In 1939 and through World War II, home canning reached its peak that has not since been duplicated. I think we came maybe a little bit close over uh, the pandemic uh, year or months. It's been more than a year. But um, the, uh, people back then were really encouraged to pres preserve their food through home canning. And the USDA kept up their research and kept up their publications. In 1988, this was when my oldest daughter was 18 years old. And for me, that's a real shocker because I was already doing so much canning by then. And, and I was following what I knew about USDA, but there were a lot of things that I was doing incorrectly back then. They published their first edition of this guide, a uh, complete guide to home canning. And um, they were very, very engaged in doing all kinds of testing of individual foods. And they, com they completely, they um, constantly put out new information on their testing. In 2005, they did a um, countrywide survey for all home canners that would take the survey about their practices in home canning. And so by that time, it was 18 years beyond the first publication of this book. And they ask a series of questions about practices in the home concerning home canning. And it was determined that 57% of those who responded to that survey were still doing things that were unsafe. They were using unsafe methods for canning. And frankly, I don't think it has changed much today. So the USDA has been instrumental in what we know about canning. In fact, they have set the world standard for canning due to all of their incredible testing. So that's a summary of the good that they have done, and it's, that's very understated. I've read some of their original research. It was incredible what they were doing at the time that they were doing it. Uh, food science is indeed a science, and they treated it just like that collected good solid data, used standardized scientific practices. They were very precise in everything that they did and they kept incredible notes. So I give them lots and lots of kudos. So if that's the good, then what could possibly be the bad? Well, the bad is that they're no longer doing it. Not for seven, almost eight years. They have not been doing any testing. Uh, key people have retired from the USDA Food Testing Division. They have lost funding. There simply is no money to do it anymore. And so we're not seeing any updates. And um, canning technology has really advanced in the past eight years. Not so much the food processing part in terms of how long do you process this food or whether you do water bath or whether you do uh, pressure canning, but the technology behind everything that we do has changed so much. We have now a whole onslaught of electric canners and they are silent on that except to say they're not safe, don't use them, but have they tested them? No, they haven't. Now, some of the state extension offices have picked up that slack just a little bit, 
but the state extension offices that are attached to universities, the, usually the land grant universities in uh, most states, they're underfunded. Higher education is very underfunded across our whole country um, in this day and age. So it is very, very difficult. We're not getting a whole lot of new information. We are getting new tested recipes from the extension offices um, and from Bernardin up in Canada. And so that's fine, but they're a lot to me. They are almost the same old, same old. It's not any huge advances. Um, for instance, there are a lot of things that the USDA never tested. And so we are told these are on the do not can list. Don't can these because we haven't tested these. And that would include almost everything dairy and all cured meats like bacon and ham. Well, is it really unsafe to can those? We don't know. And therefore, we, they have told us not to can those because they haven't been tested because we don't know. Okay, so what then is the ugly? We've gone over the good, we've gone over the bad, so what is the ugly? The ugly is this vacuum that has been left since the USDA pretty much shut down. For the last seven or eight years, there's been this whole vacuum where we have all been left to our own devices, and that has given rise to wars. There are USDA zealots, as I like to call them. And those are the ones that say, I don't care if nothing has been done for the past eight years, we are sticking to this and only this, and we're not gonna deviate outside this. And then of course on the other side are what is called the cowboy canners who, where everything goes, and I think that really is um, a, a slam at cowboys, frankly, that's my own opinion there. So there are these wars raging, and they rage on YouTube, and they rage on Facebook, and very often we have um, our viewers let us know what is being said about us on these other channels and Facebook pages. Um, I just want you to know my attitude about that. I could care less. It doesn't bother me not one bit that um, we are being slammed for what we... I know that many of you mention Rose Red Homestead uh, throughout the internet, whether on YouTube, on other channels, or um, on Facebook pages, and we appreciate that. Um, I don't engage in these wars. I don't engage with any of the zealots. I'm sure part of what they do is good work, um, but we are wrapped up in the work that we do on this channel and with our own community, and I simply do not have time to engage in anything that would detract away from my time that I want to dedicate here to our very own channel. So what is my perspective about this whole thing, about, in particular, about the USDA? Well, first of all, I really honor the USDA. I honor their diligence, their many, many decades of incredible work uh, for the foundation that they have given us, for the wonderful information that is available free on their website or very inexpensively if you would like to buy it. It is really a wonderful contribution to the world of canning, to the global world of canning. They have taught us many, many correct principles. And here is where my own practice is influenced. Because I have a scientific background and because I am a very experienced canner and have spent years literally uh, referencing the material that the USDA has given, I have been able to pick out through noticing patterns and paying attention to things and making connections from one thing to another as I go through all of this. I have learned lots of correct principles from canning, about canning. And when we know correct principles, then we can make decisions for ourselves we have a foundation for really good judgment. And um, so I do not follow 100% letter of the law, the USDA like the zealots do. I am not a USDA zealot. I have a very practical approach to what we know from the USDA. And in this 
period of vacuum that has been created since they basically um, went down. One of the things that I have done is I have tested three electric canners because I have that skill. Um, I get asked often, why don't you use your little gadget and test bacon and test milk and test this and that? Well, <clears throat> I could. I have not done that, not even for my own information. I have way too much else that I want to focus on. That is the, that is the superficial reason. The deep, heartfelt reason is because I don't have a food testing lab. And my testing on foods is very different than my testing on canners using the already tested methods. And then all I did was measure the temperature. That is very different than testing individual foods. You know, <clears throat> Jim and I have often talked about the idea that if we were independently wealthy, we would love to start a food testing lab that's independent from the government that where money is not an object and we could test all of these other things and put the information out scientifically. My kitchen is not a food testing kitchen. I do a lot of experiments, but not with testing food. And so I am happy to pretty much stick with the foods that the USDA has already done the testing with. But I don't follow all of their recipes. I follow their principles. And then if I ever want to deviate on something, I will look at what that principle is and then judge what I want to do based on that principle. If it upholds the basic principle of what the USDA has taught us about food safety, then I can go ahead. Now, how does that translate? I change ingredients all the time. I change ingredients on so many things but I don't change ingredients to things that should not be canned. But I readjust the order. I, I don't mess with the processing times. I don't mess with whether it should be pressure canned or water bath canned. I have litmus paper in my cabinet that I check for acidification on things. And so when you know correct principles about anything, then you can make informed decisions about what you want to do. We get lots of inquiries. Well, can I can this and can I can that? And if you would go to online version of this, you can check out many of those things yourself. Um, and we're always happy to help. I'm not saying don't contact us with those questions anymore. That's not at all what I'm saying. What we are saying, our goal is to help every individual in our community become self-sufficient in terms of home canning and food security. And this requires everyone to build your knowledge base. Knowledge is power. And so learn the principles of canning and then you can also make informed decisions that are within the arena of food safety. So that pretty much is my stance on the USDA guidelines. I am not a zealot. I do not follow every single to the letter of the law of the USDA because I understand their principles. And I know that there is some deviation and a good example of that is their stance on using your own recipe for soups. There's a lot of leeway for making your own soups, but it is within safe parameters. And that's a good example of how I practice my home canning in making decisions relative to the USDA guidelines. So thanks for listening. I'll get off my soapbox now, and we will see you at our next video.